CNN presents Science and Technology Week with science editor Charles Crawford. Atlanta is one of six cities worldwide competing to host the 1996 Summer Olympics. Researchers are helping out in the effort with an electronic invitation based on sophisticated computer and video technology. A camera swoops over a landscape. Suddenly, a building materializes in the scenery. It's clearly not real, but the camera seems to zoom inside, through passageways, and into a sports arena. It's not an animated adventure movie. It's a high-tech tool in one city's drive to host the 1996 Summer Olympics. Researchers at Georgia Tech designed the interactive video to help the Atlanta Organizing Committee, or AOC, which is in charge of the bid to bring the games to the United States. That's how Charles Crawford of CNN began his story of Georgia Tech's interactive laser disc video program. And here's how the president of the International Olympic Committee, Juan Antonio Samaronk, finished that part of the story. The International Olympic Committee has awarded the 1996 Olympic Games to the city of Atlanta. <laughs> Georgia Tech was a winner, too. The Olympic Village will be located on its campus. The finals of the boxing venue will be in its basketball coliseum. A new natatorium for swimming and diving events will be built there. And the university now has experienced winners in its multimedia laboratory. Winning often means overcoming obstacles, solving problems. For example, problem. An Atlanta design team came up with a stunning Olympic logo. But it's two-dimensional, flat. How do you make it 3D? Like this. Problem. In the beginning, some of the International Olympic Committee members did not know where Atlanta is located in the U.S., so they were brought in from outer space. Problem. How do you fly from the Carolina border south to Atlanta in 20 seconds? Solution. You blend satellite pictures with topographical data and create an accurate, computerized landscape of the North Georgia mountains and lakes, moving swiftly toward Atlanta. Problem. How do you quickly build a non-existent facility in the exact detail of the architectural drawing? We took the database that was provided by the architects and wrote special programs to convert it into a three-dimensional polygonal model. To this, we added color and texture, which allowed us to create an animated fly-through, thus giving ourselves an idea what the building would look like years before it is actually constructed. And once it's built, how do you position a computer building on a real aerial video at the exact spot where it will stand? In order to produce the images you see here, aerial photography composited with uh, computer-generated imagery, in this case, the new Olympic Stadium, researchers at Georgia Tech, in conjunction with the Graf Foreman in California, have developed a new technique called witness point tracking. This involves going out to the site and collecting surveyed data of visible, discernible points, bringing this, this data back into the computer lab, uh, doing computer processing, and the output then is fed back into the image generating computer and prospectively correct scenes of the Olympic Stadium are generated. These two sources of video are then merged together in a, in a standard video lab to produce the composite you see here. Problem. How do you make it more than just another audio-visual demo? Solution? Make it interactive. Bring in Advanced Interaction Inc. from California with patented software for synchronizing map and video picture. Give the viewer a user-friendly trackball driving an Apple Mac II. When the ball is rolled away from the user, the cursor moves north on a stylized map, and the video picture moves along the same path in perfect synchronization. That's how IOC members flew over, into, and through every one of more than 30 venues in the Atlanta area. The program was shown first to members of the International Olympic Committee, 
at their annual meeting in San Juan, Puerto Rico. They were quite fascinated, and um, it was the hit of the San Juan meeting, no question about it. 1990 brought a new challenge. The decisive vote scheduled for September 18th in Tokyo to select the location of the 1996 Summer Olympics. The multimedia team discussed what should be shown to IOC members in the exhibit hall during the week preceding the vote. Well, let's have it done at your place today. Mike Sinclair and the Georgia Tech team set out to create a simulation of the Olympic Village as it would appear on the Tech campus in 1996. The award-winning educational media unit of Georgia State University wrote and produced film sequences that began this way. carrying the Olympic torch into a computerized Olympic stadium. All of it projected on three screens set at an angle of 120 degrees to provide a kind of surround vision. Still interactive, an IOC member can sit beside a lighted model of the Olympic village. Animated buses wheel through the streets. Pictograms give the viewer a choice of French or English and the opportunity to view any aspect of the village life. Fun and recreation, practice facilities, medical care, housing, transportation, and food. Let's suppose he chooses housing. The model lights up the housing facilities. Then on the screens, a computerized overview of the campus moves him via Thompson Digital Imagery Software to the location of the Twin Towers. These residential towers will be built to house the majority of the athletes. Again, the architectural data from Niles Bolton was transferred to CAD by Heary International, sent to Georgia Tech, and with the help of Wavefront graphic software, the exact configuration of the accommodations are shown. Then, Crawford Post Productions blended computer graphics and film. There is a recreational room over there with the vending machines, the games, and all that good stuff. And this way is where your team will be sitting. Each interactive segment ends at an information kiosk where the athlete will be able to use a pass card, get verbal and printed instructions, and generally communicate throughout the village. I'm the line number three. There is no line. Sure. Double the line. Our vision of the Fifth Nation kiosk is sort of like a window on the gigantic network of information. It would not have all the information stored in it because it would be linked by means of a network to a more central database and, and therefore could be a lot of different things depending on the community. The total system is unique, but all of its different parts are on the commercial market. There are three video disc players, two digital speech channels, a 32 instrument MIDI music synthesizer, an Amiga PC with real-time multitasking capability integrates the system and drives it. And here's how the program ends. After the games, there will be an enduring legacy in the magnificent Olympic Tower. Beneath the dramatic span of the huge Olympic ring, there will be a permanent Olympic museum. Among the extensive collections of the Olympic Library will be the Hall of the Presidents of the International Olympic Committee, from the founder Baron de Cupertin to Juan Antonio Samoa. So this place will be a dramatic destination for sports people who have been inspired down through the years by the undying Olympic storm. Oh, 
Oh, Georgia Tech's been wonderful. We, we had high-tech Southern hospitality, and we couldn't have done it without the hospitality, but it was the high-tech that made them take us seriously. We've done some things here that uh, we would not have done otherwise with, without a good, rich, applied problem like this. So it's an integration of all this uh, image processing and defense electronics and, and other kinds of fancy computer graphics with hardcore management functions, too. So there's just lots and lots of things that uh, uh, we expect to gain from this. The kind of uh, dedication and inventiveness and creativity and, and technical leadership uh, that has been shown on this project is, is really, uh, it's really rather comforting to know that we've got that in, in this institution.